Um, hi, my name is Sean Gores with New Horizons Learning Center. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, new certifications that is coming from Cisco uh, in uh, in next few months. Uh, Cisco introduced um, a new tracks of certi certifications a few months ago, um, and we're going to talk about those uh, today. I'm going to show you what are the recommended exams and uh, uh, training for each exam are, and the prerequisites for each certification. Uh, so let's go ahead to the slides and look at these. Um, the exams that they're going to introduce right now, uh, they're introducing only one CCNA. Uh, we used to have CCNA routing switching, wireless, collaboration, and, and different type of uh, uh, flavors of uh, CCNA, but now we're going to have only one CCNA. And if you look at it, uh, then we're going to have CCNP and enterprise, uh, security, service provider, and collaboration and data center. And uh, one of the nice things that they did this time, they introduced a new tracks of certifications, and that's DevNets, which is um, uh, designed for uh, developers. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So let's look at the, um, at the prerequisites and uh, what are the required exams for each one of these certifications. Uh, the very first one is CCNA certification. So this CCNA um, covers a range of topics. So when it comes to network fundamental, network access, IP connectivity, IP settings, and uh, security fundamental and automation. So these are uh, all the topics that is going to be um, are going to be covered in a CCNA track. Now, as far as the prerequisites, there is no formal uh, prerequisites for the certifications. Obviously, there is a recommended that uh, people that they're going for this type of certification, they have at least uh, a year or two of uh, networking experience, um, and they have a knowledge of uh, basic IP um, addressing. Um, what is required for this certification is just passing one exam, and that exam is 301. Uh, the recommended training for this exam is uh, implementing and administering Cisco solutions. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. You just pass one exam and you get your CCNA. Now, when it comes to CCNP or uh, Cisco uh, Network Professional, um, there are some changes here. Um, it, we used to have to uh, take three or four exams, uh, depending on uh, track, uh, to get our CCNP certification. Now, when it comes to CCNP, there are some changes here. Um, the old tracks, uh, you had to pass three or four exams, depending on which track, to get your CCNP. On the new version, you just have to pass two exams. One is core, and the other one is uh, just a concentration exam or an elective. Um, now, if you have started working on your CCNP right now on the old tracks, don't worry about it. Continue because you're going to get credit uh, toward the new track one once they come online. Now, uh, the CCNP, um, we have different flavors or different tracks that you can um, complete. Uh, we do have the CCNP Enterprise, CCNP Data Center, CCNP Security Service Provider, Collaboration, and Certified DevNet Professional. Let's look at each one of these. Um, the CCNP Enterprise. Uh, this is basically is going to replace the CCNP routing and switching, uh, CCNP wireless, and CCNP uh, and CCDP certification. Um, again, if you have already started working on any of these CCNP, uh, don't worry about it. Continue. You're going to get credit for those uh, uh, exams that you've already passed. Um, now, there are no prerequisites for CCNP. There's no formal prerequisites, but recommended experience is three to five years of experience when it comes to uh, networking solutions or implementing network solutions. Um, now, as you look at it here, uh, CCNP Enterprise, um, as I said earlier, you have to pass one core exam first. And the core exam for Enterprise is 401. Uh, and the recommended training is implementing and operating Cisco Enterprise Network Core technologies. And as you look at down here, you have a concentration exam that you need to choose. Uh, you have uh, about six of them here. You choose one of them. 
once you pass that exam, you get your CCNP in Enterprise. Now, when it comes to CCNP Data Center, again, uh, this is going to replace the current data, uh, CCNP Data Center. And if you're working toward the CCNP Data Center, continue with uh, your exams, and then you're going to get credit for the um, uh, everything that you've completed up to the time that they're going to go on the new certifications. Um, prerequisites, again, there is no formal prerequisites for CCNP data center, but you should have um, a good understanding of the topics. Um, and uh, Cisco um, recommends three to five years of experience in implementing a data center solutions. The required core exam for um, CCNP data center is uh, 601, and recommended training is implementing and operating Cisco data, data center core technologies. And as you see, you have five options for concentration exams. You can choose any of these, and you pass that exam, you complete that, and you get your CCNP in data center. Now, CCNP security, that's going to obviously replace the current CCNP security. Uh, same deal, if you are working toward your CCNP security, continue working on that. You're going to get credit for all um, completed exams. Um, and uh, again, there is no formal prerequisites for CCNP security, but you need to have about three to five years of experience implementing a security solutions within a network. Um, same deal as the other ones, uh, you pass one core exam uh, for CCNP security. Uh, the exam is 701, implementing and operating Cisco security core technologies. That's a recommended training for this exam. And then you have six options when it comes to concentration exams or electives. And you choose one of these. Once you pass the exam, you get your CCNP. Uh, CCMP service provider, again, the same thing as cover, uh, is replacing the CCMP service provider. And uh, if you are working toward your existing CCMP, continue do, doing, do, uh, doing so. Once you complete any exams, you're going to get credit for it. Uh, same as the other CCMP tracks, no prerequisites, uh, but recommended uh, experience is three to five years of implementing service provider solutions. Um, the core exam is 501, implementing and operating Cisco Service Provider Network core technologies. And then you have three options as of now for concentration exams or electives. Um, again, you pass uh, any of these along with core exam, you get your CCNP uh, service provider. As you see, it, um, it makes it a little bit easier to take uh, to pass this exam, but it doesn't mean the exams are going to be easier. Um, now, when it comes to CCMP collaboration, um, it replaces the current CCMP co collaboration. Um, and uh, same thing as the other ones. If you have started working on your CCMP collaboration, you can continue, and you're going to get credit for any completed exams. The required exam is 801. And recommended training is implementing and operating Cisco collaboration core technologies. And you do have four concentration exams that you can choose one of them. And once you pass that one exam plus the core technology exam, you're going to get your CCNP in collaboration. Now, we're getting to a new era now. Uh, Cisco um, introduced the DevNet certification. And this is uh, something that's going to be uh, new to Cisco Tracks. It is designed for uh, people that they have um, skill set as a software developers, programmers, um, uh, people that they understand APIs, and they understand network automation. Um, now, there are um, three tracks for DevNet certifications. There is an associate level, there is a professional level, and there is a specialist level certification when it comes to DevNet. They are talking about the DevNet experts. It's not available as of now, but they're going to introduce it pretty soon. So when it comes to associate level, um, again, it's uh, 
one of the kinds, the first of its kind at Cisco. Um, it requires one exam. Uh, once you pass that exam, you get your uh, Cisco certified DevNet associate uh, level. Um, this exam uh, covers topics as of uh, using APIs, Cisco platform and developments, uh, application development and security, and infrastructure and automation. Um, there is no formal prerequisites for a uh, DevNet associate, uh, but uh, candidates who are thinking about going this route, they should have one or more um, years of experience when it comes to software development, especially uh, with Python uh, programming. Um, as I said, there's only one exam that you have to pass. 901 is the exam, and the recommended training is uh, developing applications and automating workflow using Cisco core platforms. Um, once you pass this one exam, you get your associate level certification. Now, when it comes to professional level, uh, and this is obviously a little bit higher level than associate, so uh, with this one, um, again, there is no uh, formal uh, prerequisites, but um, people, they have to have at least three to five years of experience when it comes to software developing and um, Python programming. So you need to have a little bit more experience to go for this level of uh, training. Um, there is a one core exam and one concentration exam that you have to pass to get your uh, DevNet professional certification. And as you see here, the core exam is 901, again, developing applications and automating workflows using Cisco core platforms. And then you have uh, quite, a few, um, uh, quite a few options to choose when it comes to concentration. Um, a lot has to do with automation. So once you pass these two exams, you get your um, DevNet professional certification. I hope this was useful and informative. If you have any questions regarding these certifications or any other type of certifications or training for yourself or your team, please contact your account executive and we will be happy to set up a time to have a discussion between you and one of our solutions architect about the right path and right certifications for you and your team. Thank you.